good afternoon. I'm here with Richard Harper today. And Richard, why don't you take a moment and just introduce yourself. Uh, and I believe you have a couple of companies you do and uh, your roles in those uh, organizations. Okay, so um, my name is Richard Hopper. I own uh, Print E Solutions, which is comprised of a group of printing companies that we've been acquiring over the last few years. It consists of a company called Amazing Printing, which is used for broker printing, um, Owen Business Systems, which does medical, uh, all medical practices and any type of printing material used in the medical industry, and K2 Graphics, which consists of a B2B type of solution that is for large uh, companies mainly emphasizing in the uh, automotive industry. In addition to that, I'm also a partner in a company called uh, Ground Zero Bootcamp, which is designed around helping restaurants more recently reopen because they could not op close or that, excuse me, they could not open in the same way that they closed, but to help them to also find ways to move their business at a better direction than in the past in new marketing ways as well as new operational ways. Nice. And who specifically do you serve in your two different organizations? Who's an ideal prospect and client for you, Richard? So at Printy, we are a business. We are a business to business type of printing solution. We are a one stop solution in that we are an asset based. All of the printing is done in house here at our facility. Uh, our facility services, the cruise industry. So printing, uh, Printy Solutions is a business to business, mainly in the South Florida market. K2 Graphics covers the entire U.S., mainly in the automotive industry as well as the travel industry. Amazing Printing was providing solutions to brokers who are trying to sell the print solution but need an asset-based company like ourselves to do that printing. And then Owen provides a complete office product solution to the medical industry. Uh, they have been mainly emphasizing prescription pads, file forms, letters, things that are needed in a small uh, medical practice that is a day-to-day -day operations that's non-automated. Excellent. And uh, through this unfortunate cycle we've been through the last few months, Richard, what was your biggest challenge and how have you been able to migrate through with you and your teams? You know, I, I think our biggest challenge was managing our business while the virus was going on. Um, we were an essential business, so we were servicing the medical industry, but despite servicing the medical industry, that industry overall had reduced dramatically. A lot of businesses, a lot of medical offices had closed up if they weren't an essential type of medical business. And as a result of that, there were still a few that were open. So we had to maintain a service level to them. And the difficulty we ran into was managing our staffing at the same time, trying to increase revenues, which were not going to happen because so many businesses had closed. But we're also at the same time trying to prepare ourselves for when the reopen occurred. We went and looked at some automation processes. We changed the way some of our auditing, or excuse me, some of our orders were made for customers on an online platform. And we also looked at the way in which we we're gonna market and sell because we could no longer be in a face-to-face -face environment. Fortunately, because we provide a mailing solution as part of our print solution, we were able to go ahead and do a lot of direct mails at this point in time. And there's a program called an EDDM, which is an every door direct mail, and that helped us to go ahead and reach the markets that we've in the past were not pushing for. Um, so it was managing that entire marketing aspect while trying to maintain some form of an operations as well as trying to make sure that we were maintaining some level of uh, financial help to our employees. Excellent. And with that in mind, is there any particular core values you attach to your organization and how you serve your community? You know, so uh, I participate in a lot of nonprofit out in the community areas. And during this time period, our nonprofits were affected dramatically, both from a financial standpoint as well as an operations standpoint. And being able to reach out to them and reach out to the community and try to help them through this process was a real difficult task. Um, the community in general was very responsive to the organization that I chair called Plight, which helps kids that are in the, in the foster care system that are coming out of foster care and moving into independent living. You know, our organization was restricted much like all of other Broward County school systems and other entities like that. And we could not at least provide the services to the kids on a face-to-face -face basis. So much like my business and we couldn't provide services to our customers, but we needed to be open, the same thing was occurring. We still need to maintain our full staff at the nonprofit world, but we were restricted in being able to meet with those kids on a face-to-face -face basis and helping them through this process. 
Excellent. And in addition to that, Richard, what one or two actions have you taken to make the difference in your business and for the community? You, you just you know, touched on a few of them. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I've been a serial entrepreneur for a number of years. I started when I was in my uh, way early 30s. I was in corporate America and decided that I, I somewhat didn't play well with others and I needed to, to move on to my own uh, opportunities. So um, I had recognized that the way uh, businesses ran over the past and what I had learned was not going to be applicable in the way in which we were going to reopen after the pandemic. So during the pandemic, I participated in an online educational course that you held, Michael. It was really insightful to me. And I think one of the great things that I took away from that in the book that we read, which was called Think and Grow Rich, uh, we learned that during the last major economic crisis that occurred, a lot of entrepreneurs during that time period had prospered. And in that spirit was the idea that I came up with a partner in putting together the organization called Ground Zero Boot Camp. Uh, myself and Danielle Rossi, who owns Oceans 234, put together a solution that hired or actually reached out to the 30 top consultants out in the country that are geared around the restaurant industry and helping to give them insight and ideas on how they could restart their restaurant. We know that industry was hurt really bad by this pandemic and their ability to be able to open up at a 25% level was going to be really cost prohibitive. So we had to come up with ways in which we could help them. And I think in the spirit of trying to help others and trying to help other people, one of the big takeaways I learned was that people are really a group that wants to help one another. And the collaborative effort of Ground uh, Zero Boot Camp is to try and bring the restaurateurs together, even though we're providing them with consultative solutions, ideas, and ways to be able to help. We're also looking for feedback from one another to be able to give them ideas. And the restaurant industry is really open to helping one another. They don't look at it as some businesses do, that they're competitive to one another. So they're really a group that's really helpful in a lot of ways. So, you know, one of the interesting questions that we found is there are a lot of smart people out there that can learn from their mistakes. And they were really open to do that. And it was a really big plus for us as a walk away of being able to help others during this time. Interesting you share that. First of all, Danielle is a phenomenal partner. She is a 100% outstanding class act. So good for you. You got good partnership there. And you talk about learning from your mistakes. And this is an interesting question. It's been said that smart people learn from their mistakes and wise people learn from the mistakes of others. What mistakes have you made along the way in your entrepreneurial journey? And how can you help other entrepreneurs learn from your experience, Richard? You know, the, the, the number one thing, I mean, I've had multiple companies over the last uh, many years in the salon industry, in the distribution business, in the print business, in the consulting business, and I've learned that you just can't do everything in, as an owner. Um, one of the first books I read was by Michael Gerber, and it talked a lot about helping one another learn that when you're in a business, you can't be in it and on it, and you need to be over the business. And one of the things I learned from the past that I, I can really reflect back to entrepreneurs is there's no way you're going to do it on, on your own. And the perfect example is, you know, when we looked at Ground Zero, it was a key element was to solicit top restaurateurs who were well-respected in the industry. I knew that I wasn't a restaurateur. I knew I knew how to run a business, but I knew that I needed to find the right resources in that area. And that's why I reached out to Danielle. In addition, we had to find experts to build the website. So one of the things I thought as a business owner is, you know, I can go over to GoDaddy, build my own website, and then everybody will come. But there's a lot more to the back end of an actual website. Um, you know, you don't just put it up and go, bam, it's ready to go and people start coming. You've got to look at the CRM tools that go behind a website. You've got to look at the marketing aspect that's going to be incorporated with it. We had to build a library where we would house all of our videos. These were things I wasn't really aware of. But I seeked out the experts in that area, and we collaboratively worked together with Danielle, myself, and these other uh, companies that we had paid for to put together a solution that was really helpful for all people that was very concise and at the same time was teaching us a lot about the digital marketing area. That's an area that is just an anomaly of itself. You know, I do a lot of print media and presentation marketing. And uh, because of that, we weren't as, as well understanding as to what it looked like to do digital marketing. And it is some unique process. You have to understand how to set links together, how to go ahead and reattach 
any action that takes place on the website with an email chain that helps to keep people engaged with your site because they're coming in, you have to know where they abandon you, why did they abandon you, and then when you go back and try to remarket to them, what were some of the original reasons why they came to you because you're constantly putting out different type of marketing tips and ideas to create some kind of flow to get that hot button that people are really interested in. And for us, we did a lot of fake. I wasn't familiar with Facebook to the degree I am now. And trying to understand, instead of doing a pay-per-click in Google and us trying to reach the masses, we are a lot more pointed in the Facebook side. We also learned that there are other areas that are really up and coming, not only Instagram, but Pinterest has got some really great opportunities. I would have never thought about that as an opportunity for marketing. So I think for me, the biggest experience that I drew out of this and that I kind of reinforced from everything I've learned over my years is that you need to go ahead and seek out help. You can't do it all by yourself. You need to look for the people that will help them, not competitors. They're helpful in a lot of ways. People who you do business with, people who you compete with. You know, even in the printing world today, I still communicate with other printing companies, trying to get ideas of what they're experiencing and things that are happening. And that's a really big help for us on a day in and day out basis, because we can see is the trend going up from a business side or is it going down, not just for us, but for the industry as a, as a whole. So um, collaborative work, helping one another, that was a real big key I think we drew from this. Excellent. Yeah, so many people that are very extremely successful, they want to pay it forward because they were right where we were at one day and where we were at 10 years ago. We all started from scratch and people help them along the way and they're happy to help us along the way. And correct me if I'm wrong, that book you were speaking about, was that the E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes. Excellent book. Every time I give that to a new business owner, they read it. And you probably most likely said the same thing. Oh, my God, I felt like that book was written specifically for me. Yes. It also <laughs> helps to tell you, you know, it, it, the, the ironic part is it tells you when you shouldn't be an entrepreneur. If, if you're looking for that job and that career and you're feeling that what you became as an entrepreneur became a job, maybe that's not the right thing for you. And it's okay. Not everybody needs to be or wants to be an entrepreneur. There is a lot of of challenges in there, as you know, Michael, day in and day out. You're looking at the accounting side, you're looking at the, the HR side, you're looking at the operations side, you're looking at the sales side, you're looking at the financial side, where are you getting loans from, how are you paying those back, all the things that are that are done on a day in and day out basis. So you have to be a, a, a jack of so many trades, but not to be a master of so many because it's impossible to be that. And you also have to have a strong heart and have some stamina because you're gonna be in it yes. for the long haul. Easy. Yes. Uh, Excellent conversation there, Rich. What would be one last uh, valuable piece of advice you'd like to give to our viewers today? Uh, you know, I, I, I would say that the thing that, I, that reinforced me, I, I've gone through a rough patch over the last year as we were trying to grow the business. As, as you're growing a company and buying and acquiring all of these and merging them all together, the challenge behind that is just tremendous. And, and doing three of them within a year's time period and trying to bring systems together and it just really got me down. And I really realized over the last six months that attitude plays the biggest key in your success. Um, there is no doubt in my mind that the thoughts that you convey into the actions that you take. You know, since transforming my outlook from a constant, woe is me, I'm challenged, with, this is not a good day, we're not gonna do, and I changed my thought process around to being a lot more of a positive mind of looking at, okay, how can we make things better? What are the things that we wanna move forward on? One of the goals we want to set, and it was reinforced by the time we went together through our seminar that you helped us coach us on, um, you know, Think and Grow Rich kept reinforcing how important your mind plays in the things that you do day in and day out. In addition to that, I read another book, which was really, really helpful, which is Zen and the Art of Happiness. And it really talks about how the mind plays the most crucial piece. And I think I always thought it was like a cliche, and I, I thought it really wasn't, people just like to say that, but I really experienced how my mind and my attitude changed, so did the world around me change. I was attracting more positive influence, I was attracting more help, you know, because I knew, for example, I was going to get the PPP money. I didn't question that I might get it, I didn't doubt that I was going to get it, I knew I was going to get it. And we got that money. And I knew I was going to get money if I needed that EIDL money. And we received that funding. So I think the attitude, the biggest thing I can say is believe now what you're going to accomplish. And you have a greater, greater chance of making that happen 
than trying to use a woe is me. And I know it's hard as an entrepreneur. It's extremely difficult. We're our own kind of coach. And we, if someone utilizes someone like yourself to kind of help reinvigorate them and move them in a positive direction, that's awesome. But not everybody either can afford that or knows about the resources that you provide. And because of that, you're on your own. And it can be really a down emphasis on a regular basis. And you've got this problem, this problem, this problem that you're constantly working on. But if you look at those problems as opportunities, as, as ways in which to improve, and you have more of a positive way of looking at those, it will change the way in which things happen in your business, I guarantee it. And I would not normally have said that, except what I've experienced over the last six months to a year has been tremendous. I've gone from a very negative view to a very positive and uplifting view, and it has changed. And it's opened my eyes to see things that maybe in the past I would have had them closed because I said, nah, that would never work. Well, now I'm saying, well, maybe it will. Let's go try it. At least we're better off than saying it never did. Valuable advice. And uh, unfortunately, we have to go through a little bit of pain before we get that aha to finally figure it out, huh? So true. Uh, so true. Now this behind me, Attitude Action Results, came back in 2000 when I got a good look at a little kick in with a dot-com bubble as a financial advisor. And I had to go through the same process, but absolutely positively right. And A is the first letter of the alphabet for a reason. Yeah, great point. Yeah, great point. So, great point. Well, a uh, great chat today, Rich. I wish you success with your ground zero. You've got a great partner. You're making a big, big impact in the community. We need more people like you out there. And uh, I want to thank you for the time today. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate it.